Good morning, everybody. Everybody see and hear me okay? All right. It's June 6th. I want to remind you of our um, the winning trade room disclaimer, uh, educational purposes only. Just a quick reminder. Also wanted to um, welcome anybody that's new to the room. I see a few uh, new names, so welcome. Uh, just to get started, I wanted to um, just show you the, the chart on gold. We got a huge push up overnight. And so what we need to do is be cautious on, on the long side, just because we've hit some fairly um, extensive FIB extension numbers. And so don't be surprised if there's a pullback. So we need to be, um, be cautious on the charts are screaming longs, but um, just need to be cautious that there's not, um, that it just doesn't go into chop here or um, come back and, and retrace a little bit. And then crude oil is just showing um, chop, chop today. So we've got this chop area, I highlighted it on our chart. Just need to um, pay attention to, to that. We don't need to be caught up in all this garbage. So we have inventory at 8.30 8, 8 Mountain Standard Time. So we'll keep an eye on that. As far as news goes, we've got very minimal. We have an 8 o'clock, um, some light news, which I don't think will affect anything or much. But um, there's always that risk that it can, so we'll just keep an eye on that. We're just going to kind of sit here and we've got... Our new levels up and they're um, super accurate oh, wait today's Tuesday sorry I'm a day off I'm jumping the gun Hans the bartender in the back he's uh, keep he keeps a tight leash on me so thank you never mind I was scrolling through the week news So that, um, for some reason, stuck in my brain. All right. So you can see gold. We have these boxes um, that I highlight every morning. They're high volume boxes. The pink line is kind of the um, the high le the high volume level. Um, we couple those with our um, levels, and you can see the overnight structure. Is showing um, extreme e extreme extension. So if it pushes up and out of here, that's that's fine and dandy. But um, don't be surprised if it uh, chops to down. We'll get some new number calculations about um, at pit open. So we'll have those that will be updated. My prep work, I don't know, 20 minutes probably. My prep work, it, it, I've done it so much and so often and that it just kind of happens. Um, 20 minutes, 25 minutes probably. So let's, let's watch gold off the, we're having this a push off of this extension number. We have we have um, open pit open here in one minute. Yeah, the level lines are automatic now, and they're going to be available soon in the room. The calculate update. Uh, overnight daily numbers, um, intraday numbers. You've got more levels than you know what to do with, and it's good stuff. So here's our update in levels. 
So here's our first line at 95. And we're getting a reaction off of that. So if we get a reaction, um, push down or pull back in a fail, then we look for a target down here um, in the 88s. We push above it, we're looking for up into the 13s. So we've got some major momentum to the upside. So hopefully we can stick with that momentum and, and push up and out of here. So we'll, we'll see what it does with this level here. Lost my, uh, there we go. can see a recalculation level here at uh, 94.9. We've had a small reaction off of it. So we're going to just let the trade come to us. Crude still uh, chopping in our zones. We're just going to leave that be. So the new level, the levels are um, used as, as resistance and support. And you look for reactions off of those levels combined with double tails. As far as education on the levels, we'll um, we'll have a webinar or something. That I'll explain them and teach you how to use them. Then you can um, have them on your own screen if you'd like. You can use them on any any market. They're fractal. All you need, all you need to know is the when the pit opens and closes. That calculates everything for you automatically.
So if we uh, push above this level here at 94.9 or 95, and we'll look for a pullback into it, and we'll look for a long. Um, I'll do the session on levels when the actual indicator is ready. It's almost ready. I'm just work. I'm just changing a few labels. It's um, it's pretty perfect as 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 is, but it's not quite ready for prime time for you guys. I want it on it very simple, so you don't have any questions. I noticed there's a glitch right there. When I close this screen and come back to it, the levels are gone, so I have to reload it. So that needs to be something that's fixed. So I'm just running it through some tests because I don't want to roll out something that's not completely perfect for you guys. Yesterday we kept we exchanged uh, winner and loser, winner and loser, and I think we got uh, I think we were down thirty at one time, and then we ended up three hundred down. There's some tight ranges yesterday. Feels like we're at a standstill here. Yeah, welcome to uh, welcome to the room if you're new. We always have a good time in here, but um, some of you might notice I'm I'm, I'm here for uh, I'm here to trade. I'm not here to talk about the weather and stuff. So if I, if you're looking for um, small chit chat and you don't get it it's not because i'm not um sociable i'm just trying to get you guys in and out of trades and off to your day and if you put something in the chat and i don't get back to you right away it's not because i don't care or don't want to talk either i didn't see it or it's something that's um not urgent I just want to make sure um, everything's focused around trading and learning and um, and all that good stuff. So, hey Ty, can I have a quick minute? Yeah, I'm trying to pass the funded trader prep. Pass the combine. Now I'm in the funded trader prep, and I'm. I'm going to pass that here shortly. Ty, can you hear me? Hmm.
Hey, Ty, can you hear me? Well, guys, it looks like Ty can't hear me, and I don't want to speak over him, so I'll try to contact him another way. No, I can't hear Scott. Hold on a second. Scott, are you talking? I was trying to. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Sorry, okay. my speaker's off. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because everybody else could hear me, but you couldn't. <laughs> um, no, I just wanted okay. to jump in here before we get into a trade, say hi to all the new people that are coming in, and uh, just let you guys know, we also have a, an after-hours Skype room that I'll be inviting you all to. Um, if you decide to stick around with us and that is kind of where the conversation continues after the trading session and that's sort of where we iron out a lot of you know discussion points and learning whereas we try to keep this part of the trading session strictly to trading uh, because if we have you know hundreds of people in here uh, asking instructional type questions that's just not going to work and so if you'll look up here at the uh, at the bar at the very top, the fifth icon, one, two, three, four, five, six, actually it's seven, it's the room drive, it's a little folder. Click on that and watch uh, the videos in there that Ty has produced for us on his levels and uh, chart setups and so forth. Once you go through that folder, 99% of all of your questions will be answered. So let's do that and then, um, see where that gets you. And if you have any questions, shoot me an email at support at winningtraderoom.com. Thanks, Ty. I'll leave you alone now. Okay. Thanks, Scott. So when you, when you look, uh, someone asked me what order flow I use and I, I look, I watch book map. I don't trade off of book map or, or use it to trade. I'd use it to verify the levels. So when the levels um, plot, I like to verify them and it's not, not completely necessary. I just do it because I'm anal that way. Um, so, for example, at, at um, 95.1 in gold, there is, um, you know, on average, there's 20 to 30 contracts per tick sitting there, but there's 150 sitting up here at this level. So they keep flashing in and out, and, you know, some, some are real, some are spoofs. But this level is obviously something that other people are watching as well. So if it fails, then we look for a short. And the reason we would look for a short, it's totally counter trend. It's because we're overnight, we went um, to level to extension levels that usually means there's going to be a pullback or a, or a push sideways. And if it doesn't, we won't take our long and go with the trend. But as of now, we've got crude that's chopping sideways. We've got um, the NASDAQ, which we don't really trade here until equity open. So we've got an hour for that. And I've got a double tail or a um, yeah double tail chart that I can't find for the life of me with the alarm on it. So if you hear the buzzes and the dings, that's what's going on. It's my mystery chart it's somewhere. So let's see if we can get a pullback into this level again. Here's our first reaction off of it. We're still inside the high volume box here. Usually when we break out of that. Um, it tends to go vertical one way or the other, and obviously we're looking for a push down um, to 91 and then ultimately down to 88. So we want one tick over the level. So let's look for um, pushback. Ultimately, I'd love for it to clear this out, pull back, and then give us a double tail second wave.
Um, the boxes, I love to trade breakouts of the boxes. But what I try to focus on are the, the pullbacks and the second waves. And when you use a breakout strategy on this box, what I've learned is that you need to use the bottom of the box as your stop. And so sometimes that tends to be more than most people can handle just because you will get pullbacks like to the edges of the boxes. So like this, if it popped out of the box by a tick or two and you got filled, you can see that it, it came all the way back to the edge of the box. So I like it to get out of the box, confirm that it doesn't want to be in the box by pulling back and then go. Um, the, the levels are automatic. You just in, uh, turn it on and let it let it do its thing. Completely customizable to any anything you want to trade. They're fractal, so they work on any time frame, um, any everything. This is also the 11 Tom bar up here uh, up on top. It shows our channel and it shows a little pull back off the top of the channel. Shows our smooth indicator that was over so overbought and it's pushing down. So we're getting that.
So you can see it came right to the edge of the box here and it pushed up a little bit. So here's our pullback. What I like to do as well is if you're not so the bigger the wick, these are just tom bars the bigger wick bars are double tails so there's two double tails here this one here if it pushes down it won't be a double tail but there'll be a pullback tail on it and i really like those trades especially at the edge of this box and this closes at 93.3 but I'm looking for a pullback. So it pulled back to this extension number from overnight. We were within a tick of it, failed. As of now, So we've got pit open in crude oil in 20 minutes, and so we'll have new levels. So right now we're kind of in the in the middle of the zone, and it's obviously chopping. So it's something that we need to stay away from, just to stay out of trouble. Ultimately, ultimately, I'd love. Um, I'd love to see a pullback, you know, almost up into here and then a failure. And remember on the chart, these bars look big, but they're really not. Or tom bars. So if we get a breakout, we get a pullback. Um, we need to um, we need to take it. If we get a pull up into here and a push down, we need to take it. So um, you have to remember that we're we're playing like a micro scalp situation here because um, when you look at the bigger bars. It's showing, you know, a pullback and a push up to continue. Um, it's big move, right? So we've got inside this bar. It's been going for 50 minutes almost. So from this uh, swing high to now is that one bar. But you can see the tails on these tom bars. I'm gonna put this back on just so we're consistent. Bigger charts in crude are showing uh, shorts. So once we get um, open and some new levels in crude, we'll see if we can get a short. Because ultimately that's what the longer out chart 
join. Sometimes I talk about the double tail in the middle of the run. Right here on crude, this is what I mean when you get a pullback that's just shy of, of plotting a new bar and then it closes down in direction. Those are really good uh, trades. So we'll go through these um, little sessions of lulls that tend to get boring and this is when traders tend to get antsy and try to put on trades. So you need to teach yourself that there's a lot of downtime and it should be boring, right? We're not here to gamble or get, get a rush. So we're getting our um, test of our level again. I wouldn't be surprised if it pushes through it. I'll take the first pullback into it. At 95.1 level, which is just above our level, is um, we still have that big chunk of of liquidity. Love for a little double tail to form here in crude. So I think this um, I think it's gonna go short here. Um, equity or NASDAQ is just chopping sideways. There's something special going on there. If this pushes down and forms a double tail to the downside, um, I'm hesitant to take it just because we're in this chop. I would like a, a signal down below all this chop, down below 93, but it looks like it wants to push up through here.
All right, here we pushed our level. We just um, plowed into that liquidity. <clears throat> Nothing filled yet. They keep adding to that liquidity up there. Now there's 250. So the entry of this close of this bar would be 24 or 94.3. Makes me a little uneasy field because just because we're still in this chop would like for it to clear out this stuff and give us a double tail. So my point was, is being, being on a short bar, we don't, although I would prefer it to be as close to the level as possible, we don't necessarily need to be there if we get a confirmation. Um, so for example, this chop here, if we, if we get a confirmation below it, pull back into it because we've already failed the level. So to give up, you know, 10 or 12 ticks to get to confirm, um, I would prefer that. So ultimately we have an entry here at 94.3. And so our 10 ticks, you know, is down in this area where it bounced before. This level's at uh, 250 again. So they keep adding to it. If it drives through that, then um, it's gonna show that we def they definitely wanna go along with it. Uh, daily target is Depends on how many contracts we're trading, but right now it's um, three to four hundred. So we've got about five minutes till crude, till pit open. And this looks like it wants to go short. Let's wait for our, our, our levels and pit to open. Just it can kind of get a little for I don't know 20, 30 seconds. Three contracts. And the first um, I look for target of 10. Sometimes we lower it down. based on volume and structure and things like that. So each trade is entries are consistent, but the, the targets can fluctuate um, just based on levels and structure. We just navigate it. Once we get into it, we navigate it. We manage the trade. So this entry at 94.3, number one is counter trend, but it still has chop, but it's coming off a level and it's been um, confirmed. And we have volume above us. So it would be a, um, fairly low risk entry. Our, 
our stop would be less than 10 ticks, but it keeps popping up here. Let's see what the top of the hour brings. I like the top of the hour because you get the hourly bar, half hour, 15, five, and everything under, under the, and over the hour um, algorithms use those times. So you usually get a little influx of volume at the top of the hour or hour. Just drove through that. So let's look for a double tail and a pullback. This 95.1 is an iceberg. So who, who knows how many contracts are actually there. But if it can hold that level and go, then we can be in good shape. Or we'll be in good shape. Max loss is if I, if I lose three in a row, then I'm done. Sometimes it's two in a row, just depends on the day. An iceberg is an invisible order on the books. Big institutions can hide their orders. But you can see, you can see them fill. You don't know how many contracts are there, but you can see them fill. And so, it's an area where a big institution is basically loading up, either getting getting out of a position or or getting in. And there's another block of orders at ninety five three of 192 so they might they might be feeling short just because it's so extended and then it'll drive down when they're done so they could have artificially driven it up into that level fill their positions and let it go and let the sellers take over or they might be getting out of the position that they got into yesterday afternoon or last week I have a good friend who trades a longer term and he got in at um, I think his long position last week was at 1265 or 1270 so it's probably time to be unloading that position I mean they're up 25 bucks you can see our new levels in, in just plotted we have a confluence down here So if we can break below this level and push down, pull back, we can look for a target of uh, 46.69. A 
let's not get antsy and um, jump into what's showing up right here. We need to see if we can get a reaction off of a level. Yeah, and so um, Swayze pointed out that there's a bunch of volume down here at 70 on what, 47 on crude, and there is there's blocks at two, two, two hundred and fifty. You know, several ticks lined up. So if you're short, you pop into that, you get stopped out. So these levels are pretty sweet because you'll see a lot of volume stack up around them. So you know that they're inflection points and that's what they're called. They're called in, the, the indicator's called inflection. Here's our midpoint here. So let's see what it does. You can see the reaction. I mean, it stopped that run right into right in its tracks. And so, don't get excited, crude. We're still caught up in this chop, and it'll eat you up if you decide. Especially with this small bar, it'll eat you alive. So let's let for, let's let it get out of this range, and then um, looks like it's pretty active. Let's let let it get out of out of its range, and then we'll um, take a direction. All right. So gold looks like it's wanting to push up. So the buyers are kind of stepping in here on crude. We would have a long entry here at 42. But since we're still in this chop, I'm going to let it um, let it do its thing. Ultimately, if we can get a reaction off of this level, especially to the north, that's when we shoot for our targets, and those are hit um, very, very high percentage. So instead of risking being stopped out here or pushing up to 47.50, what we're going to do is wait for a reaction of this level or a failure of this level because we are a short bias right now. So long would be counter trend. So if we get a, you know, a drive down and a pullback, you know, we can look for a 47 target, which would give us, um, you know, probably 20 ticks.
So it reacted off that midpoint. Gold's pushing higher. So we've got a um, little bit of chop here. Gold's trying to break out and give us a trade. We need to pull back at a level and then a um, double tail. NASDAQ still chopping sideways. I've got some light news at the top of the hour. So I'm going to place a buy order at 95.5 for a long. If this decides to react off this level and push up and take us. So 95 half. So I'm going to take that off. That was a quick move. So I'm going to take a confirmation here at 95.1. Uh,
Order filled. Long. Our target is right at about the swing high at 96. Then my runner, I'm going to move up. Stop at the 94, and we'll slowly leak that up once we get once we start pushing up. Once we hit 10 tick profit, um, I'm going to go to break even on the runner. My runner, I'm going to put up here at this target because that's where it could go if it decides to get get crazy. Then I'll manage it with my trailer. So I don't see much liquidity above us as far as um, big time sellers. And so this should keep driving up. Watch this swing high. So I'm going to put it down right below the swing high just in case it decides to, to stop there. Remember, you can take profit anywhere you want. It's not forcing you to you know, wait for your 10 ticks. I wait for 10 ticks. Sometimes I adjust it down to eight, seven, if there's liquidity there. Okay, here's our push. If this swing high is broken, it should pop up pretty quick. There's a lot of pent up G here. Tick shy. Should drive through it. Target filled. Okay. So I'm going to move this to break even. And then we're going to let this go. So what we do with our trailer is um, once I look at a set, 
on bar. And that, my stop would be 94.7, being here. So I, I wait for that level to get up to my break-even level. And then once it starts moving up, I move it up. But right now I'm protecting my runner as far as taking a loss. If it comes back and stops, we have a good trade. And if it keeps going, then we're following it. But it should break the swing high. There's some uh, volume moving in underneath us. So that's always a good sign. Buyers are kind of stacking up below us. Once this breaks, it should pop pretty quick. There's a big iceberg at 95.9. There's been 100, 150 contracts that have filled there. So someone's going short. It's only showing 20, 20 contracts on the books, but it shows 159 that have, have, uh, have filled. So there's some big boys that are filling positions today. The thing about icebergs is you can't see them until after the fact. <laughs> Maybe. But did everybody grab target there? Good job. So you guys can do whatever you want as far as your targets. I mean, some, some traders use seven, some use five, eight, it's your first target. I use 10 just because just, um, statistically it works, works for me. You know, yesterday I missed two of them, I think. I was shy a tick, a tick or two on two of them, and they both turned out to be losers. All right, we just drove through that iceberg. Um, we just drove through. Now we're right at the iceberg. Is it 95.9? Uh, so right here where it, where it pauses. So it shows 20, 20 contracts on the books, but it shows that there are 100, you know, 112, 110. 50 it was was 150 at one point were filled at that level you can see that it's just holding it here but once we drive through that if we do then it should should um, push pretty good because we've got some volume pent up below us meaning uh, longs are starting to stack up.
Steve, build it for us, baby. <clears throat> We're still waiting on uh, crude oil to react to one of these levels we've um, still in this chop zone. It's kind of pushing the lower limit, so we'll see if it decides if it wants to break out to the downside. Here we are pushing that level. So we're looking at um, ninety five. Yeah, right around in here for our seven tom bar. So here's our target one. Um, See if we can hold this pull back and get another drive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my stop um, below this level just to protect this pullback. So you can see um, we had a recalc um, that put this target at 96.8 and it hit it right to the tick. Well, it went above it, I guess, by one tick, but.
ultimately I'm looking for this longer target here, 13, plus it's an even number. So somewhere in between here, we'll nab it. So we'll let the NQ open, give us some levels, and then we'll trade off of it. Ninety-seven two. There's a bunch of liquidity up here again. So it's reacting off of this uh, recalc number. So if you guys are looking, you know, one lotters, you're looking for a target. If you get pushed up in this level again, it wouldn't be a bad idea to, to nap it. But I'm working on um, giving it some room, letting this runner work, especially when you have um, these big days like this where it wants to push. So we've got um, equities open up here in about 30 seconds. So you'll see a reaction here in oil or in, uh, well, oil too, but gold. Could push up into this 97.2 again and test it. So here's our NQ. You can look for a short here off of this um, level, but I'm gonna um, I'm gonna manage this gold one.
see the reaction off of our recalculations here. It's acting like it wants to go short. It's not quite ready to give it up though. This gold wants to push, but Here's our push here. See if we can get it to drive through. We can look for a pullback into these levels and along in the NQ. So we need to pull back. See, there's our trade right there. There's a bunch of liquidity stacked up here, so I'm not going to take this uh, double tail. 
long. Just because for the NASDAQ, it's abnormally um, large. So we can hold off. Let's see. We, we want gold to push up through here. We can manage this baby. Also, uh, all the new pe people, um, appreciate you being here. Welcome, Bruce. We need this to break and we get a nice push higher on a runner. CL is um, still kind of chopping. We're still in this zone that I highlighted from overnight. Here's our push again, see if we can get it. Should drive through this, hopefully. We should get a um, nice little pop out of here if it does. It's another iceberg at 96.9. Nine. Not very many orders have filled though. So we'll see how many it, it accumulates. Only 39 right now. Uh, breakout above this would probably be a good trade, but it's going to be quick. You might get some slippage there.
Yeah, just above those swing highs. But if it doesn't, yeah, I mean, you won't feel, I guess, if it fade, fails. I've got my stop below this um, level at 95.8 just to protect it in case we get a pullback. So here's our um, another level that we broke through, pull back into it, and we should get a push up into the uh, 5890s. So 85 half. I missed it. So 85 half is, is a long dive out here. Eighty five even. Eighty four fifty. Here's our test of our um, our level. Should get a push up into the high idea. So we um, pulled back right to the level. Now we're testing our eighty-four. We should get a bounce here off these levels and push up. Order filled. Okay, we're long, long the NQ. I'm gonna put my my target up here, right below this swing high.
I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna take off this NQ tray. Target filled. Um, just because I have too many contracts going for what I can do, and this should work out. Unfortunately, I have to close that out. We need gold to break out here. Um, with NASDAQ 86 even, there's a bunch of liquidity up here. So if you're looking to take a target or your first target, I'd have it right here. So that's another good trade for you guys. Any of you get that? Good job. So gold wants to push up. We have that iceberg filling here. Um, but if we can drive through that puppy, it should be off to the races. Watch in Q and watch this target up here at 88 three quarter or 88 half. And then watch the re then watch the reaction up here these levels This ninety six nine, ninety yeah ninety six nine, we've had one hundred eleven fill, and it's only showing forty on the books. There it goes. So now I'm going to hide behind this uh, next target. Or this low, which is where our iceberg was. So we'll see if it uh, protects it. There's another uh, iceberg at uh, 98. So somebody's filling some shorts. Big time. Big time positions are being um, built today as this is being pushed up. So the next uh, iceberg is up here at 90, 97.9. And when it popped up here, there was a lot of volume that pushed through. There's 50 contracts that filled on the iceberg up and over the, the amount that's there. And there's 150 there. So there's 100, 150 and 109 sitting up here waiting to be filled. So we'll see if it grinds higher. Our stop is at 96.7. Catch you later, Steve. You can see um, crude is just still chopping in that zone, so staying away. You can let it eat other people's lunch. A 
runner could get stopped here. Stop filled. Okay, so that was a decent trade. It was kind of a choppy grind. Um, decent trade though. So I think I have to hang it up today. It's uh, almost eight o'clock, I gotta run. Um, but I wanted to remind um, all the newbies, um, welcome to the room, enjoyed it. I'm glad you like, hope you like what you see. Um, and hope to see you tomorrow. It uh, Tomorrow's inventory day. I was a day ahead, jumping the gun. Um, so we've got that and crude, and then um, not sure we have on the on the dock here on on deck for news tomorrow. Let's double check. So we got crude oil at eight thirty Mountain Standard, and some credit at one o'clock. Other than that, we're pretty mellow. So we've got that going tomorrow. So I'll see you guys uh, bright and early, and. Um, Hope you guys made some money today, and I'll see you in the morning. Alrighty, have a good rest of the day, okay? And thanks again for coming. Thank you, Ty. Boom! Some good training okay, there you. we got today. It was slow and choppy, but this is the thing that uh, is most important to me that everybody really gets: the whole excitement process, the sweaty palms, the heart palpitations, and all that nonsense. We avoid that here. Okay, we don't get into that kind of trading. So if that's what you're used to, you're not going to see it here. We take good trades. We do the same thing every day. Ty follows the same protocols every single day. And hopefully over time, you will be able to recondition yourself to uh, discipline yourself to that degree to where when you follow the same protocols every single day, sometimes the market will go against you but you still go back into the same trade with the same setup and the same protocols. And that's where winning takes place, especially in this kind of an activity where the only thing that is going to work is to find a winning strategy and then follow that winning strategy every single day, every single day, instead of adjusting it constantly based on changing circumstances, changing emotions, changing feelings and so forth. Okay, so we'll see you guys back in here, 8.15 a.m. New York time. Thanks very much for coming. See you all later. Thanks, Scott. And thanks, everybody, for stopping in. Uh, see you in the morning.